Hey class, this is Juan Ramirez with EE2725, Linear Circuits 3 AC, and today we're going to get into AC power analysis. That's chapter 11 of the Fundamentals of Electric Circuits book, and uh, we'll start off with looking at instantaneous and average power. So with AC power, um, we really take a look at a few different types of power. And that's for a few different reasons. So first of all, um, although we can we can consider a circuit steady state, the instantaneous value of voltage and current changes with respect to time, right? The voltage and current signals are time varying if they're sinusoidal or if they're any type of AC waveform. So obviously at any instant in time, Voltage and current will be different, and therefore power will be different. So that's where we get instantaneous power from. Um, and obviously we care for average power over a period. Um, but then there's also different types of power. And we sort of call this um, overarching tree of power categories, if you will. We call that complex power where we have apparent power, real power, and reactive power. And we'll get within this chapter into power triangles where we use um, phasers and sort of do a type of vector analysis to be able to really visualize the power generation and consumption within an AC circuit. Okay, so that's a brief introduction to chapter 11. Um, and now let's get into instantaneous power. So instantaneous power is power at an instant in time. So, oh. oh man, okay. And power at an instant in time will be voltage at that instant times current at that instant. And this will be in watts. And instantaneous power could be zero, um, because obviously voltage and current, when they're AC, they're going to have to cross zero to go from positive to negative and vice versa. So you will have zero power at least twice within a period, right? As you go from positive to negative once, and then as you go from negative back to positive a second time. It's actually possible to have it more than that if the voltage and current are phase shifted. If there is a difference in the phase angle between them, um, then they'll cross zero at different times and you'll have a value of zero for instantaneous power four times within that period. Um, and so maybe we can visualize this a little better by taking a look here. Right, so if let's say blue is voltage and green is current, at this point here, the voltage is zero, so regardless of what the current is, the power will be zero. 
at this point here, the current is zero. So even though the voltage is positive, the current is zero, so the power is zero. This point here, again, voltage is zero, current is positive, but power is zero. And here again, current is zero. Um, voltage is negative, but it doesn't really matter. Because the current is zero, so the power will be zero. And then the next time they cross zero is a new period. So within one period, this is an example of having four instances where power, instantaneous power, is equal to zero. Okay, but we actually tend to care more about average power. So average power over a period is 1 over the period times the integral from 0 to the period value t times v times i or sorry, the integral of v times i from 0 to t. Again, this is in watts. So this is average power over a period for literally any voltage and current signals. They don't have to be sinusoidal. And they don't even have to be AC. Um, however, if they're DC, they don't technically have a period, so um, it sort of just becomes voltage times current. I should maybe clarify, if they're DC steady state, they don't have a period. Okay, um, so for sinusoids, the average power will be equal to one half the peak, one half times the peak voltage times the peak current times what's called the power factor, which we'll talk more about later on. That's the phase of the voltage minus the phase of the current. Okay, and that's going to be in watts again. All right. So let's do a quick example where we look at average power and instantaneous power. So again, just reiterating real quick, instantaneous power is power at an instant in time so you look at a certain time value and you find the voltage at that time value and the current at that time value. You find the product of those. That's the power at that time value. Could be positive, could be negative. Um, average power, the equation that's really important is that is this integral form. So essentially you use this average power calculation typically for a periodic signal. Could be AC, could be DC. We said if it's DC steady state or non-periodic, um, then we just use V times I. But for any periodic signal, um, and AC, or AC signals are, tend to be periodic, we can use this 1 over period T times the integral of voltage times current from 0 to period T with respect to time. 
And then for shining solids, we have this sort of shorthand. One half times peak voltage times peak current times cosine of the phase of voltage minus phase of current. Okay, now let's go through this example. Figure I'd try to make it a little bit more applied. Let's find average power and instantaneous power at time zero seconds drawn by hair dryer. And we're going to assume a frequency of 60 hertz. So I don't know if you guys know how a hair dryer works. Uh, typically, what's done is a lot of current is put through coils of nichrome wire. This nichrome wire tends to get very hot. Um, so it's a, a type of resistor that's controlled such that for a certain current that goes through it, it gets to a certain temperature. And then there's a little fan behind it, and that fan blows air onto those nichrome wires, those nichrome wire coils, and uh, the air, you know, gets, uh, you know, blown outside of the hair dryer. And so what you end up with is hot air coming out of that hair dryer, right? Um, but because you have nichrome wire, there's inductance. So the resistance of the nichrome wire is what's actually drawing power from the mains, right, from the power outlet, the 120 volt, um, the resistance is what's drawing it and actually dissipating that power as heat, but then the inductance is um, inherent to the fact that you have all these coils. If you were to open one up, you'd see. So the circuit might look a little bit like this. Okay. So we have 169 volts with the phase angle of zero degrees. That's about what we get out of our outlets off the wall. We say 120 volt, but that's what's called root mean square RMS, which we'll cover actually in the next lecture. Uh, but the peak value is about 169 to 170 volts. And we're going to say that the equivalent impedance seen by the source when you connect a hairdryer is 12 ohms resistance, 5 millihenry inductance. Let's convert that 5 millihenry into an impedance. We said frequency is 60 hertz, which we know if you multiply that by 2 pi, you get 377 radians per second. So J times 377 times 5 millihenry gives us J 1.89 ohms. Now we can find the current drawn by this hair dryer. Current drawn by it is simply the voltage divided by the equivalent impedance. Now 
by this point, hopefully you're all experts at converting between rectangular and polar form for phasers and vice versa, um, or using your calculators to do that. So I got 13.91 amps with a phase angle of negative 8.95 degrees. Okay, um, so that, if we convert that back to a time varying signal, that gives me 13.91 cosine of omega t, which is 377 t, minus 8.95 degrees in amps. So, for the first, uh, the first question is average power. That's going to be one half times 169 volts because that was the peak voltage of the source times the peak current, which is 13.91 amps times cosine of the phase angle of the voltage, which is zero minus the phase angle of the current, which is negative 8.95 degrees, so double negative gives us a positive. Plug that into your calculator, and you should get about 1.16 kilowatts. That's the amount of power that is being drawn by the hair dryer, and that's being converted into heat that then gets you know, thrown to you using a fan. Maybe not thrown, blown. Not a hair dryer guru. Um, so then we are going to take a look at instantaneous power at time zero. So that's going to be voltage, time varying voltage at time zero times current at time zero. Well, it's pretty clear that the voltage signal, V of T, is 169 cosine of 377 T. So V of zero will be 169 cosine of zero, because we're plugging in zero for time. And then for current, we have, if we look up here again, we're going to put the star. The current time domain signal is 13.91 times cosine of 377 times T, which is going to be zero because time we're saying is zero, um, minus 8.95 degrees. And then when you plug that into a calculator, you end up with 2.32 kilowatts. So there you see that you have almost twice the power when you're looking at instantaneous power at time zero versus average power over a period. Um, and that's because of the fact that these signals are sinusoidal in nature. Um, so just know that we design for average power typically, but we also consider peak instantaneous power. It's very important as well. Um, ultimately, power drawn is going to determine max temperature of a device. So if you're designing a circuit, you want to know the max power drawn by each component or dissipated by each component and then you're going to develop thermal models of the component to determine how hot this component will get if this max average power is dissipated over x amount of time what will happen is that over that amount of time the temperature will increase, increase, increase until, until it reaches a steady state or equilibrium point. 
and it'll be up to the engineer to determine if that equilibrium point is too high or not. So those are some of the considerations we have to take into account as we design circuits, especially in this case for AC circuits. Um, but this is true also for DC circuits. Just remember we use that integral form of the average power calculation. Thank you very much, and please uh, work on some examples in order to further sort of, you know, let this new information settle in. Goodbye.